Hey, hey, it's TDA, and today I want to start making a lot of progress down this technology tree. I'm going to show you how to set up planetary science, how to build these upgraded knights, and we're also going to be setting up some organics. On top of that, another couple of tips and tricks, because at this point you will find that your base is becoming a little bit larger than it used to be, and that also means that you're going to want to fly around it a little bit quicker. What you can do is to set up a very simple spaceship like this, with a couple of engines attached to that, and the more engines you add, the faster it will get. And you can actually enter your ship by pressing X. So this will allow you to fly around a lot faster. As you can see, I'm already going at twice the speed as I was going before. But you can also start upgrading your own vessel as well. If you check your map, you should be able to find an oracle somewhere on your map. And this oracle, this Celestara oracle, is where you spend these orbs in order to get upgrades for yourself. Now, in order to get there, we're going to have to build up some offense and defensive capabilities. Because as you can see, it's quite far away from our base. Luckily, it is on the way to the um, system over here. The Terra world that we're also going to need to get the planetary science. So in other words, today we're going to progress all the way up here. Clear out this stuff and get some technological advances as well. Speaking about technological advances, I also decided to upgrade my defenses a little bit. As you can see, it's still the same basic layout. So we have a couple of these uh, defense platforms over here. I've added in an exploration center just to make sure everything gets cleared out so these things are not lost in the fog. And I've added in a couple of repair centers so if anything gets damaged it should be repaired. Now what you can see we actually have these armor blocks around here which go a long way towards making sure that the enemy doesn't take your bases out too easily. Now these things don't have unlimited armor or anything like that but they do have a fair number of hit points so it's a, just an easy way to keep yourself a little bit safe if you want you can also add in a laser turrets but keep in mind those actually need fuel so it's a little bit annoying unless you have a constant fuel supply you will need to keep an eye on that and actually refuel their fuel if you want to do that by all means do so but this will actually go a long way to just having automated defenses that get automatically replenished because if any of these ships are being destroyed we're already building new ones to replace them in order to meet the goals that we've set for this particular episode, we're going to need Singularity Field Generators. And the recipe, as you can see, needs three different inputs. We need the fabricators, we need the AI controllers, both of which we've already been producing after the last couple of episodes. And we also need mass energy converters, which we already produced in the last episode as well. So the easy way to get this up and running is just have a couple of these ships that I've showed you in the previous episode. Um, link them up with some connectors as you can see over here and then basically this stuff will start producing now you do need to check if you actually set this up correctly because as you can see for example my circuits are not being delivered correctly because as you can see the ship is basically the wrong way around so if you set this up with a lot of these logistic chains do double check your connections and adjust them when needed uh, unless you're smarter and than me and you always do it correctly the first time around Okay, I'm not gonna lie, having asteroids run out of actual materials is one of the most annoying things in this game. Not necessarily because I want the resources to be infinite or anything like that, but mostly because it's actually the way I've set it up now. It's a lot of work to reallocate all your supply lines. It's um, kind of annoying to have to remember which ship is flying where with all the ships flying around. Uh, especially if I set things up like I've done over here with all these different... Um, production chains so in the next episode i'm actually going to completely refam the base i think because i'm getting that itch again there must be a more efficient way to do this and i think i know how however for now i'm just going to re um, locate all my iron production to the asteroid i already had reserved somewhere over here i have one over here i have one over here so there's plenty of resources to go around uh, just having to move the bases is actually kind of annoying so planetary science honestly this is one of the least intuitive types of production chains that are in this game because in order to actually produce these ships the planetary research bots we're actually going to need recycled asteroid research bots so basically what you have to do is first you have to make the asteroid research bots which of course you have already been doing at this stage then you need to recycle those and you do this in one of those ship reprocessing plants so you can actually request the asteroid research bots in here and then it will recycle them into a recycled asteroid research bot and then you can use that along with a couple of other things so inserter bots and fabricators which is just fine um, and you use that to make planetary research bots so why can't you just make these ships from scratch rather than first making one ship scrapping it and building it 
once again. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure what the logic behind that is, but that is how it works. So, as you can see, we have the uh, reprocessing plant over here that just feeds into the station core. Why? Well, just because that's convenient. And um, this thing actually needs quite a bit of power. So, uh, everything combined, we have two of these antimatter stations over here. And then we also have an assembler over here because this is going to make the inserter bots. The inserter bots need plasma engines and medium density structures. So these are the two things coming in over here. Then we have the reprocessed um, ships coming in from the top. And then all we need is the last ingredient, which are the fabricators, which are going to come in from the side over here. And then, of course, these ships are just going to launch up into space. And you can make sure you have one of your shipyards set to receive them just to make sure that there's no production going to waste. Okay, I once again double check my production and as you can see we do have the planetoid bots now in production. So that means we can actually start doing some science. And the thing I want to start making are these knights. Now these are way tankier battleships compared to the bats that we've been able to make before. They have a lot more HP, they do slightly more damage as well. They do have a smaller range but honestly that's not really a problem. Um, and luckily we actually don't need to reprocess bats or anything like that. We can just make these straight up from plasma engines as well as singularity field generators. Now remember singularity field generators are actually pretty expensive to make. You can see the material requirements as a whole for one of these ships. So Take that into consideration, but these things will last a lot longer than the bats. And of course, you can also start upgrading these pretty much from the get-go. So uh, giving them extra hit points, even more hit points than they already have, and increasing their damage and stuff like that is definitely worth it as soon as you start producing these. Now, in order to make sure I didn't have even more ships flying around, well, well I actually did add one. Um, over here, I added just a simple ship assembler. I connected the inputs for the plasma engines to the same thing that's also making all our other ships. As you can see, we're delivering way more plasma engines than we actually need over there. And then I have another ship that's flying up and down with the Singularity uh, fuel generator. So that's all we need. And as you can see, I'm pumping out the Knights at a huge speed. This is going to slow down because we're actually consuming a lot of our Singularity fuel generators like this. But for now, that will do. Now, in order to start clearing my way through the map, I built this little battleship over here. So as you can see, I combined two station cores. Not nearly necessarily because another station core adds anything to the layout, but it just looks really cool. And I added a couple of engines and a couple of these defense platforms. So we have a lot of these ships. Now, it's actually really funny because these ships, the, both the bats and the knights, are automatically assigned to empty defense platforms you can. Request specific units if that's what you want to do. But I'm producing both of these, so actually I don't have much of an issue um, using them. And apparently I am actually getting attacked, so this is really convenient. Because now you can see my battleship in action. Now, I actually added some turrets in here. And even though I don't like turrets on my static defenses because of the fuel requirement, this is actually a battleship I'm going to fly around myself. So, in that case, I'm probably always going to carry around a little bit of fuel somewhere. And as you can see, we can now start flying this thing around. My ships are going to be automatically attacking. And the knights have a very useful ability that they can actually put these shields down with the uh, B command. And as you can see, this actually blocks the enemy fire. So that makes it a lot easier to clear out large uh, groups of enemies. Because your ships will actually be safe inside these little bubbles that these things pop up. Let me show you that once more. As you can see, they've kind of put up these shields like this, and that makes it a lot harder for the enemy to actually attack you and defeat your, your vessels. Now combine that with these swarming uh, groups of bats, and that actually makes it really convenient. I should probably start by placing down these shields before I send in my bats. Uh, but as you can see, I didn't actually lose a single unit so far, even though these are pretty advanced units. I'm already in the 40% enemy strength territory. Nothing major or anything like that, but as you can see, Things become a little bit more hefty in here. But as soon as I place down my shields, I did lose a couple of my bats now. As soon as I place down my shields, uh, they suddenly start taking almost no damage. And I can easily wipe out the remains of the enemy. Uh, as you can see, my laser are actually also doing their work. If I move a little bit further away, you can see them more clearly. As long as they have fuel, they will start uh, shooting at stuff. And you can dump any type of resource in here. So you can even put in buildings as fuel if you want. Uh, and of course, you also need to make sure you actually have... Um... Did I lose an engine? <laughs> Apparently, I did lose an engine there. Um, you also need to make sure your engines stay fueled as well. 
Now, it didn't take me too long to work my way to the Oracle. And as you can see, if you uh, right click on the Oracle, you can once again jumpstart that building. You might get a little speech once again. No. My consciousness has been reactivated. I am of the Celestara, a priesthood of the once great Luminae civilization. I can grant you some small part of our former power if you bring me Lumen Orbs. Return to me when you have gathered a sufficient amount. Well, I picked up another couple of, uh, of those orbs on our way, so we have quite a few now. So what you can do is uh, increase your crafting speed by 10% for two of these. You can upgrade that six times. Not the most useful thing because honestly I haven't really run into any crafting issues whatsoever. The speed increase on the other hand is a 25% upgrading. You can do that 10 times. So that's a 250% increase if you would spend all your orbs on this. That's a pretty huge one. You can increase your health as well. But if you're dying you're doing something wrong. The afterburner charges are again a good way to get around faster. It's this little boost over here. Has a pretty long cooldown though. So I'm not entirely sure if this is worth it. And then of course we can also upgrade our plasma bolt. I haven't really used those so far. I'm not entirely sure if that's worth the upgrade, but uh, it's a thing you can consider. And then you have the ancient tech trash, which honestly isn't that useful until later in the game. So what I've done, I've just spent most of my upgrades on the actual speed increase. And as you can see, I'm now flying at 150 meters per second, which is considerably faster than what I've been doing before. So I really like the particular upgrade. Now the next thing on the list is organics because we've unlocked all of that research. In order to make organics work, what you're going to need is comet catching in order to make sure you can actually catch the comics and then reprocess them. You're also going to need the greenhouses because this is actually uh, what's going to make your organics grow. And then you might also start working towards things like advanced materials. But honestly, if you have the, re the technologies that I just mentioned, you can at least set up the basics. So it took me a little while to actually figure out how to make a nice looking and efficient um, organics layout. But I think this pretty much does that trick. But I'm happy to hear you from you in the comments if you made a better or even prettier layout. Now, what is going on over here? First of all, we have the Comet Catcher. As the name kind of suggests, this is going to literally catch comets. And those are going to come in across this path over here. Keep in mind that anything that can get destroyed in this path will get destroyed by these comets. Or at least take damage from it if it's in the way. So you don't want to have this pointing to any part of your factory. And you also want to make sure that your ships that might be flying around are not going to come across this line. Because they might actually get destroyed. And that's a very bad thing, obviously. But... Again, just keep this in mind when you're building this. Then next up, we have the Comet Harvester attached to the Comet Catcher. And I'm not entirely sure why this is not just one building. But anyway, this is going to turn the um, Comet Cores into ice. Nothing special there, but this ice is going to be vital to actually getting your organics production up and running. However, you can also use it for different things because it's pretty much an infinite resource. This, this, there's always going to be comets to catch. You can also easily use it for things like power generation in your Singularity power station. These power stations turn whatever you put in here into power. As you can see, even just putting ice in here actually already generates 77.5 kilowatts. So that's pretty huge. Uh, it's a very good reason as well because the Comet Harvester and the Comet Catcher themselves actually consume quite a bit of energy. However, the real trick to producing organics is actually the rest of this layout. So in order to redistribute our ice in an efficient way, I'm putting it into the station core over here and then I can export it in four different directions. I, why I'm doing this, I'll get to in a moment. But the main thing over here is the greenhouse station. This is what is actually going to be producing our organic compounds. Now, as you can see from the recipe, we actually need ice biological substrate and organic compounds in order to produce organic compounds. So it's kind of like a fungi. You start with a little bit, it grows, you harvest it, and then the remaining that you leave behind is going to grow into more fungi. It's kind of, at least in my mind, that is what is happening over here. Now remember, we actually were farming some ice from these small little comets earlier, some small little asteroids. And you should also have gotten some organic compounds to go along with that. And if you haven't, or you might have tossed them away, because I honestly, I think I threw a couple of stacks of this away already, uh, not realizing it wasn't iron. That's what I probably thought it was, but it was something else. Uh, just go out and harvest. If you just have a couple of this, that's going to be more than enough to get, keep you going. You need about 10 
or so um, in order to get started. Now, in order to get started, you're going to need to do two things. First of all, we also need the biological substrate in this recipe, which you can make in an atomic printer. And again, you need organic compounds in order to start making this. So all you need to do is put a little bit of that in here like so. Make sure you have a little bit of that in production and you can take it out again. And then all you need to do is put the remaining stuff in here. And as you can see, it will gobble up a couple of this and then it's going to be spitting out a whole bunch of organic compounds over here. It's actually going to refill the requirements that it already had. So don't worry, you're not going to waste anything. And then I'm splitting it here using a junction. So I'm actually already making some more of this uh, biological substrate. And then in the other one over here, I actually have a more advanced recipe for organic polymers. Now, again, this needs ice, hence the nice combination with the station core that we already had available over here. And it's going to need organic compounds. So it's a pretty straightforward recipe, but because you need a couple of different things and you need that organic compounds in three different places, it took me a little while to get an efficient layout going like this. Now, as you can see, it's a pretty fast recipe. It's spitting out a whole bunch of this stuff at the same time. And then all you need to do is just pick whatever you have up here. And as soon as you see the first recipe uh, going, you can just pick up whatever is still left in here and you can go and seed the next one. Now, of course, you're also going to need some of that substrate, but we have a little bit of that over here already. So we can just put that in this box over here. And as you can see, look, look at that old fungi growing. And now both of these are working. It's actually a pretty fast recipe, so you don't need to make this very complicated. If you want, you can make um, the greenhouse layout a little bit larger than this. So you can extend this a little bit and put down a lot of, uh, another couple of these greenhouses in here. Uh, but honestly, I found that for now, this is going to be more than sufficient to get us going. Okay, now we have asteroids flying in, hopefully not destroying anything in the process. And honestly, I'm not entirely happy about how the base looks like I just said before. We have, we're kind of scattered all over the place. It's a little hard to tell what is actually connected to what. So in the next episode, I want to again redesign this. I'm not, not necessarily saying there's anything wrong with these layouts, but I think there is an even more organized, structured way in order to set up your base. So if you like that, if your OCD is just as bad as mine and you want everything to look exactly neat and organized, then you're definitely going to want to join up for the next episode as well. If you're still here, you're awesome. And I do hope to catch you in the next one.